Hey everyone, today we are going to talk about intermittent fasting. So as the name suggests, it is fasting. So you're not eating for a period of time. Nothing at all other than just like some water, BCAA, coffee or tea. So intermittent fasting is not a diet. It is a pattern of eating. So it is not about restricting calories. It's about a change in habit when it comes to eating. So it is basically a change in lifestyle. So intermittent fasting has been so popular. It's everywhere. There's tons of research about it. And there's a lot of favorable results when it comes to losing fat and maintaining muscles. I'm going to talk about the benefits, how to do intermittent fasting, show you my 7th and 10th day results, some useful tips, and also talk about the cons and who shouldn't do it. So let's talk about all the benefits about intermittent fasting because it gets me excited. It trains your body to burn fat by being metabolic flexible. So fasting as little as 16 hours, which is what I did, is going to help you to burn body fat more easily. So what happened is that your glucose level drop. So basically the sugar in your blood drop when there's no more food in your system. So what happened is that your body is going to turn to the fat in your body as a source of energy. And that's when you burn fat. Simple. So that's the reason why intermittent fasting helps you to be more metabolically flexible. So you're able to use carbohydrates and also fat as a source of energy. So carbohydrates during the day when you're eating and fat when you're in the faster mood. The second benefit is that you're going to be able to maintain your muscle mass and burn more fat and also potentially increase your muscle mass. So to understand how this works, you need to know how your hormones and how your body works. So there's two main big hormones that we hear all the time when it comes to losing weight and gaining muscles. And that's the human growth hormone and also insulin. So human growth hormone is basically a fat burning hormone, the hormone that's responsible for growing muscles and also it is an anti-aging hormone. So it is the hormone that you want in your body. Insulin, on the other hand, triggers fat storage. It doesn't necessarily make you fat. Overeating does that, but in the presence of insulin, your body can't burn fat. It is the dominating hormone. So what causes a spike in insulin? Basically, every time you eat, it doesn't matter what you eat, every time you eat, there's gonna be an increase in insulin. So that's why intermittent fasting is great because your insulin is going to be low when you're in a fasted state and that's when you burn the most fat. So your body goes into the fasted state after about 8 to 12 hours since your last meal. So that depends on what you ate as well. So during this fasted state, your insulin level is going to be really, really low and your growth hormone is going to increase so that's going to help you to burn fat and also grow muscles. So the third benefit is that it improves your metabolism. So according to Zona et al and also Menzel et al, there's an increase in metabolism from 3.6% to 14%. So number four is less binging because you only have eight hours to eat and the chances of you binge is tons less now. Tons. So number five, the chances of calorie intake is possibly lower. Although it's not about calorie restriction, but because you only have eight hours to feed yourself, the chances of being calorie deficit is a lot higher than you know, feeding normally. So the sixth reason is that it helps you with your hunger hormones because your blood sugar is more steady. So that's going to help you to crave less sugar. Number seven, this is impressive because it helps to slow aging. Number eight, I personally have experienced this. I felt a lot stronger. During intermittent fasting, I can lift really heavy. I think that's because of mental clarity. So yeah, those are some of the benefits and that's the reason why I'm trying this out. 
So I'm gonna be continuing doing this for the next couple of weeks. So do check out my what I eat in a week video to see what I eat and how I feel. You could also check out my previous video and see what I ate for the first week of intermittent fasting. I had lots of good meals so I was not starving myself and it may help you to decide whether you want to start intermittent fasting. Let's talk about how we can do intermittent fasting. So you can do the 16 hours of fasting and 8 hours of feeding period or you can do the 20 hours of fasting, 4 hours of feeding period or the 5-2 method. So there's tons of ways to do intermittent fasting. But personally, I think the 16-8 method is the easiest. You can start with 12 hours of fasting first. See how you feel. Listen to your body. I didn't jump into 16 hours straight away. The first day, I had to snack on some cashews and a lot of it is just in your head. The hunger can be mentally or physically, but a lot of times, the hunger that we feel are all mental because we're so used to eating a certain way. So it's just because of our previous eating habits. So yeah, try to ease yourself into intermittent fasting if you're thinking of doing it. So now I'm gonna show you a clip of how my body looks like after a week of intermittent fasting. So I'll show you a before and after and you can definitely see that I've lost some weight around my belly. So this is how my body looks like after one week of intermittent fasting. I'm not squeezing my abs, I'm not tensing my abs, I'm not sucking it in. This is how it looks like naturally right now. I can definitely see that I have lost a little bit of weight around my belly. So week one has been great, but obviously the first couple of days are always the hardest. But yeah, as you can see, I haven't restricted my diet much at all. I'm pretty happy with the results so far. You know, it's okay. It's pretty good. So I'm getting ready to weigh myself. Here's the weighing scale. Oh, is that in the frame? Yep. One kilo! <laughs> so this is how it looks like after 10 days. I'm not sucking it in. I'm not pushing it out. I'm just letting it rest at the natural position. I can definitely see that I've leaned out a little. Um, definitely on my belly because that's the first place that I can see a difference when it comes to losing weight. But yeah, you can see a massive, massive difference because um, after it has only been 10 days, like there's no way that you can lose so much weight in 10 days. That's just unhealthy. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed by the results. Uh, and that's because I'm eating healthier now as well because I was eating like crap when I was overseas. So yeah, it's looking a lot better. So now I'm going to give you a couple of tips when it comes to intermittent fasting because it can be quite challenging at the beginning. Um, so I personally think drinking tea helps me a lot. You can also drink black coffee with stevia. You can also drink BCAA in the morning. I've just started drinking BCAA before I train. I have a balance of macronutrients. So I have a balance of carbs, protein and fat. Having more fat in your last meal is going to help you feel fuller for the whole night. Don't eliminate carbs. Don't forget to eat carbs and also have tons of fiber because fiber is gonna help you to fill you up too. Drink lots of water. Sometimes you're just thirsty. You're not actually hungry. Go for a walk. You're probably just thinking about food the whole day. So that's the reason why you're obsessed about eating something. Sometimes it's just in the head. Go out for a walk, distract yourself, and you're probably not even hungry. It is called mental hunger, and that's a real term. And get enough sleep, because if you don't sleep enough, your hunger hormone is gonna spike up, your cortisol level is gonna spike up, so just make sure you sleep enough every night. So now I'm gonna talk about the cons of intermittent fasting, and also the people that shouldn't do it. So number one, there's a chance of a decrease in muscle mass if you are on calorie deficit diet while intermittent fasting as well. So you don't want to decrease your muscle mass because 
more muscle mass means higher metabolism. So ideally, you want to increase your muscle mass, not decrease your muscle mass. And number two, it is not suitable for people with eating disorder. So if you have eating disorder, you might be more obsessed about the rules of intermittent fasting, when you should eat, what you should eat. It is possible that it's going to make your eating disorder worse. People who are already really stressed out. So basically, if you have a very high cortisol level. Number four is that if you're pregnant. Don't do it if you're pregnant. That's just not healthy. Number five is that if fasting has caused any emotional and psychological disturbance. So if you're not happy, if you get really upset about it, don't do it. If you don't like it, don't do it. Number six, this is something that I haven't experienced because I've only been on it for a while. Some women lose their period while they're on intermittent fasting. So I guess that depends on the individuals and also your approach to intermittent fasting. Maybe they were doing the more intense intermittent fasting. So we don't know, but some women lost their period while they're on intermittent fasting. So I guess the best thing anyone can do is to experiment it themselves. Maybe try a 14 hours fast first and see how it goes. So yeah, that's all from me today. Give this video a thumbs up. Drop me a comment if you're gonna try it out or if you think this is just stupid. Just let me know down in the comments. I've also written an article on my blog about it because I just can't fit everything into this video. There's just so much more to say, but you know, it's getting too long. So yeah, that's about it for today. And the next video is going to be a what I eat in a week video. So I'll see you guys on Saturday. Bye.